going to go ahead and start start the uh, hearing. So we're going to go ahead and open the uh, meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and uh, my name is David Bloomberg, and uh, Sarah Northrup is a board member, and Elizabeth Silver and Bob Riddle are associate members. And do uh, we know who's? Well, well, we'll do one thing at a time. And then Carolyn Mish is here from uh, the, uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainability to support the board. Um, we have three matters on today. We'll first open by asking if there's any public, anyone here just for open public comment that does not relate to one of the applications before us tonight. Seeing nobody, uh, we'll dispense with public comment. Um, the first matter um, is a, a before us is the uh, application for a commercial finding. For Lori Caparello and Ellie Shelburne, Northampton Veterinary Clinic to convert non-conforming medical office use to veterinary use at 199 Tech Street, Florence, map ID 23-291. I have uh, multiple conflicts here, um, here uh, including the fact that I'm representing one of the parties to this transaction. So um, I am going to recuse myself and go away and hand the invisible gavel to Sarah Northrup to uh, hear this application, the 530 application. Um, and then I'll come back for the next, there it is, there really is a gavel. The next two, um, so uh, uh, Sarah, I'll let you go ahead and uh, um, open, open the hearing on the um, first application. Are you leaving the room? Um, yeah, okay, I'll be, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in the hall. Or outside, so beautiful. Yeah, okay. that's a good idea. Okay. I'll do a code. Welcome, I'm Sarah Northrup, opening the hearing for commercial findings. Uh, as previously stated, is the applicant here? We are. Hi. Hi. Um, would you come to the podium, give your name and address, and um, we present your case. We have your information that was forwarded to us by... Okay, yeah. I'm Lori Paparello, and this is Ellie Shelter. We're the owners of Northampton Veterinary Clinic at 227 South Street in Northampton. And we're interested can in... Can I sit here so I can hear? Sure. Thank you. That's okay. We're interested in um, purchasing two of the condos that are currently utilized in one space at 190 Nonatuck, um, currently the internal med medicine specialist group there. Um, and you have our application? Yes. Um, I think it mostly speaks for itself. We think that the use of the space will be very, very similar in that they're a medical facility and we are a medical facility. Um, obviously our patients are animals. Um, so we've already spoken with the uh, other condo units there about that fact and they are amenable to us uh, joining the condo association. Um, we will put up a small area of fencing as a, a safety issue for us so that we can walk our patients safely, but it will be limited to the area around our building, and we'll certainly have our staff members very attentive to the animal waste that um, comes along with our patients. It certainly behooves us to have a clean and pleasant environment as we have at our um, current veterinary hospital on South Street. Uh, there will be some remodeling that will happen in order to convert some of the space to slightly more open space because we do need to make room for um, more of the hospital type functions that our practice requires that the internal medicine folks um, didn't have in their practice. Uh, but beyond that, we anticipate that the use will be very similar in terms of patient flow and appointments and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's I don't, I don't think we're bringing in any new, you know, hazards or anything like that uh, into the mix. And we've got a really nice buffer with the neighbors. It's a lot larger buffer than the current buffer. Um, and we really haven't had any trouble with our neighbors. We're good friends with the next door neighbors. So, um, so we're hoping for a smooth and easy transition. This is an expansion, I mean, uh, um, a total move, not an expansion, it, right? It's okay, most likely a total, street. that's our, well, it is, is this an appropriate form to ask about that? Can I ask something about that? <laughs> I don't or know if we could answer it. We could answer that. <laughs> well, yeah, our, our, our it's, a, a, it's kind of a general, general question. So we haven't decided, this fell upon us. We were looking, we were out through our building, and uh, our building is hard, plenty of 
square footage, but it's up, so we can't move off from the parking lot as limited in terms of our ability to expand. So, um, so we really were looking to just sort of do a satellite clinic, and we fell upon this, which is at a very good price and a much better layout for the flow. So we can go from four exam rooms to seven exam rooms and have space for cats to sit down and parking for our, for our clients and food to sell and that kind of thing. So from a just a flow, it, we are going to move the entire clinic there. We haven't decided what to do, whether we should do a satellite clinic at our current space. It is, uh, so it's originally a veterinary clinic, and it's been there for the 50s as a veterinary clinic. And it makes us sad to lose it, but financially, I'm not sure that we can maintain it as a satellite, whether we have enough clientele for that, probably not. So my question in general is, is it possible to take a finding for lesser use for that before we sell it if we sell it? Can that is that something that uh, you would, you would um, I would say, come talk to Carolyn about that. Okay. Um, or, or just the building inspector. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to talk to you about Great. it. Great, okay. Yeah. So we're trying it's to just going to be tricky for us to market. It's yeah. very hard yeah. to market because it's, you know, it's a beautiful house, but it's a very nice <laughs> And we can't sell it to another man. So, but yes, the plan right now is to move the entire clinic to 199 talk, assuming the due diligence goes through three to seven. Thank you. Um, any comments from DPW or anything like that? DPW didn't have any um, concerns. No um, from yeah. Board of Health or anything like that? We don't send to Board of Health, but if they need um, licenses, whatever they do, I mean, it's a separate process. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> um, any questions, Bob? Are you going to have kennels or anything like that? No boarding and no, no boarding. real kennels. I mean, there's space, cages space, but. It will be the same amount of space that we have in our current facility, which is small cages for our patients and then a couple larger ones for big patients. Any comments from the public? Please state yeah. your name and... Uh, well, am I okay right there? Sure. Morning, Sam. Um, I'm in a butter. I live at 197 on the top, which is kind of kitty corner across the street. Mm -hmm. And I'm also here on behalf of um, Louise and Michael Martin Dell, who are at 192, I guess. They're right okay. next door. Um, just a, a, I tried to look up the application online, and I wasn't able mm -hmm. to. So forgive me if this is all information you provided. Uh -huh. But I, would, I didn't know you had a current location, so I don't know anything about your business. But we're, we're interested in, and I'm particularly interested in, um, what part of the building, how much of the building, and the ways it will impact our, the neighborhood. You know, we look, I guess, lighting, parking, traffic, sounds, hours of operation. Those, those were questions that I think probably would be easy for you to yeah. figure out. Yeah. And then the other question I have is, I know it's a non-conforming, which is why there's even a hearing on this. That, um, the building is a pre-existing non-conforming, is that the case? It's in the industrial zone. We don't allow medical office uses in the industrial zone, so it's a request to move from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use. But there are a lot of medical offices in the building. But it's mixed-use industrial. It's not just industrial. It's in a neighborhood, right? No, it's actually just that parcel, and then it wraps around to the uh, along um, Riverside is also industrial. Oh, really? So it's connected, sort of in the back. So it's a. But okay. then the rest, then. The residential homes, for the most part, are zoned residential. It just happens to be this building plus sort of looping back to the side. It's oh, that's interesting. I always assume because it was built where there had been a farm that it was um, residential or mixed use, but I never had a sense of who they did the our, our, our The history of it, I think, was Riverside Industries, which is mm -hmm. um, the manufacturing yeah, industry. That. That's where it started, and then there was some problem that made them like some big you know financial mm -hmm. problem that made them have to leave and then in the 70s the doctors moved in and i guess they've been not conforming they never got a permit for it so it's industrial um, but it, it's been the doctor's office since we're looking at the do you know where the northampton internal medicine it's, yes uh, yeah. that's that's the that's okay. where it was. so the like the front south it's southeast, southeast yeah corner. Okay. southeast corner uh, 
the from the street, street it's actually for the still back. for sale. It's right. The main entrance is on the side. Yeah. The side of that. Yeah. And in terms of impact, I mean, obviously, I think that the they said they were up to seven doctors at some point. You know, in terms of their mm -hmm. flow, and uh, we are at four and a half equivalent, so it should be similar. But obviously, dog patients, so they might be out in that area walking around with. Stop. Where, where on the site will you fence, fence off the cliff? Very small. So there's a side back entrance uh -huh. where, where we're just taking out hospital patients. So that's not where our clients would go. Mm -hmm. That would be where we would go when our, we have to just take them out. So we won't be like doing much of the walking around because we don't want our patients to get loose. Mm -hmm. But I'm certain that uh, clients will be walking around there. So we will certainly have you know, clean up stations and have people going out to clean up. We currently on South Street, so in a much more, um, okay. we're in a much more residential oh. neighborhood here, and we had no problems with it. Our nearest so neighbor is right, right next door. Yeah, <laughs> close to that shed. And in fact, I spoke to him today just to give him an FYI, and he, he was he yeah. teared up and said, we'll wait to see you guys go. So we've been good neighbors, but. Hours of operation, we not will it be weekdays generally? We are open on Saturdays for half a day currently, and we actually have one Sunday a month where we have a cat only, a four hour uh, period, and then we're eight to six. Um, Monday through Monday. Not evenings, it's not like an animal hospital. It is it's not a, a nor do we intend for it to be an emergency clinic. And no whole thoughts that. about going in that direction. There's a really good one in South Georgia, but we're not interested in that. That, that takes a whole to and generally house cats, not exotic animals, no elephants, no nope. <laughs> horses, cows, dogs, dogs and cats, dogs and cats, rare rats, rats. rats. Yeah. 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 rare little creatures. Creatures. So, so think of dogs sometimes. Dogs are your, you know, the biggest concern, and it's even more of a concern, really, honestly, with the condo association because we've got an acupuncturist and a dentist, yeah. and so noise control would be very critical. I don't think you'll have any noise issues at all within the building. It's concrete walls that are really thick. Um, you know, we're more concerned because the, the walls don't necessarily reach to the ceiling, so we're going to make sure there's noise control to the neighbors in, within the condo. Uh, the only time you would hear dogs would be if they're walk if our clients are walking them outside and they bark at each other. Probably not much different than dogs walking down the street. Okay. And there's no, um, thank you, there's no conditions that were set when the non-conforming building permit was granted that might be in question now? Um, <clears throat> I don't believe so. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any record of anything. The medical office use, um, I don't know how long it was there previously, but even so, it doesn't necessarily carry forward automatically to the next use. The board would have to determine if it made sense to place any conditions on this applicant or any future applicant relative to any issues that might arise. <coughs> we had been told as neighbors, and it was probably maybe a gentleman's agreement, that we could assume that we could expect to not have activities at night. For example, it wouldn't be night so I, I, don't know any, I don't know any conditions relative to that. It's industrial, and a lot of industrial uses are 24-7. So, you know, the fact that they mostly don't have 24-7 operations is is great for the neighborhood, but yeah. there's certainly no condition because it is zoned for industrial. So if everyone moved out and an industrial user came in by right, they could be running 24-7. Okay, that's, that was interesting. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to um, just read, in general, our purview, and our role uh, for zoning um, is pretty narrow. So the request is for a finding determine whether a change from one non-conforming use to another is not substantially more detrimental to the district than the existing non-conformity. Um, any other comments or questions from the public for or against? No? Thank you. Anything from the board? We have a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? Okay. We we'll close the public hearing. Um, and um, does anyone want to form a motion or discuss? <coughs> um, do you need to discuss something? No. 
so we can hear the second um, item on the agenda, and that's a commercial finding for buffer setback for New England Urban Senior Living LLC for new construction, 62-unit residential building with 9,000 square feet of ground floor, commercial use and associated parking structure at 10 Holly Street, Northampton, FID 32A, 170, 171, and 197. Uh, by the way, notice of this hearing was published on April 28th and May 5th, um, and I'll ask for this, uh, really for all applicant applications that we'll first hear from the, the representative of the applicant and then after um, that uh, the board will have an opportunity to ask questions um, and then after that we will open it up so that people who are here uh, who would like to address uh, this application will have an opportunity to do so. We ask that all questions uh, be directed to the board not to the applicant or to each other. Um, and uh, for everyone who speaks, we'll, we ask that you give your name and address just for the record that Carolyn is keeping of the hearing. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then I would just, um, to clarify, this is a hearing about um, the fact that there's this um, separate parking lot, which I think the applicants will, will go over, um, that does not meet the minimum buffer requirements to the residential district because it, um, part of the parking lot is Central Business District, but the parking lot goes all the way over. And um, as um, you may know from your site visit, or certainly residents know, there's not much landscaping to that parking lot, and we require that in zoning. So the request is really just focused on that one separate parking lot and the changes that are being proposed for the landscape buffer. So the board's <coughs> role is to determine if the change of use and therefore the landscape plan is um, you have to find it under the finding that it's not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-compliant landscape buffer right. so, right from um, uh, the, the, the physical changes to the parking lot that will support the new view on the other side, but we're not so, so we're not so that the issue of the new right. right so the issue of the change of use of the buildings is not uh, within the jurisdiction. Now, will the planning board be hearing tonight? Okay, later. so yeah. so just I think for the edification of people who are here later tonight, there's a planning board hearing, and it's within the jurisdiction of the planning board to address issues relating to the the buildings and the, use, the, and, the, and the use of the entire complex yeah. the only issue before this board uh, has to do with the alteration of the parking right. and and that is for a, uh, a finding um, okay with that preface we'll ask the applicants to please introduce yourselves and uh, give us a brief description of the your application please. we're working on it Okay, we're going to have difficulty. Okay. Students probably some reading glasses in there. 
That's the technical difficulty. You can't. I've got some one and a half so if you want to borrow. Uh, I think we can. Once he gets it open, we'll be okay here. But, uh, in any way, I'm uh, Dave Sanders, HBD Cambridge, uh, from Webster Groves, New Jersey. Uh, our company uh, began doing senior housing probably 40 years ago, but 35 years ago we invented something called urban senior living, which was to try to make people to a pedestrian friendly campus where they can act independently and do things they want to do when they want to do them rather than being bused from the woods to the downtown. <coughs> this is uh, Mike Sassente and John McCarthy, one of the owners, uh, have this property under contract at the moment. <coughs>
the south of it, that lot line where it says URC, there's a home in there. One of the things that's, I think, a good starting place on this particular lot that you saw maybe on the Google map that you'll see, I think, some more here in a minute, a lot of very large existing trees, all of which should be able to stay. Uh, this time of year, when they're all leafed out, it's it's a pretty uh, pretty dense buffer, but we will be adding significantly to that. These are in to give you an idea that one in the lower left is that sort of planted swale at the bottom of the parking lot to pull through water. That's really in the CBD and against the sidewalk. Um, the one on the lower right is our standard kind of combination uh, privacy fence, to speak, with um, evergreen or deciduous trees uh, and interspersed in between uh, deciduous shrubs against the fence and lower plantings in the foreground. So quite a bit of additional planting will occur around the residential boundary uh, throughout the parking lot. This shows that landscape plan. Glasses aren't here, but I'm pretty sure it also represents somewhere the location of some of the existing trees from the survey. And as I said, there are quite a few. This drawing, I think, is helpful in that it shows the before and the after. The shaded area there that you see is the boundary of the existing pavement. Um, so the lot is shrinking in its overall size. Roughly the same number of cars. I'm not sure why they shaped it the way they did, but. Um, it lays out uh, pretty well. We gave up two parking spaces to get the 10-foot planting buffer in front. Uh, but the uh, setbacks from the lot line increase on all sides. They increase on Phillips, Holly, and the other two uh, sides as well, pretty significantly. And in the lower right-hand corner of that lot in the back, you see that dark shaded rectangle there. The present condition has the lot quite close to the lot line and a house adjacent that's pretty close. And uh, that is one place where the existing trees kind of leave a little gap. So we reversed that and increased the setback there to the largest dimension we could get it to. That's why that square is there. And then it's larger all the way across as well. Uh, and then of course with the fence and the new planting, I think we can plug that, that one gap. Uh, let's see. All right, let me. Uh, well, you see some trees there, but the trees I'm talking about there. If you look at those trees in the background, they're they're big. Um, there's no evergreen in there, and we will probably uh, utilize some of that so that the effectiveness of, of leaves are with us year round. The pets will be there obviously all the time. Those, those, all those trees, as far as we can tell at the moment, can remain and will have more access to water absorption at their root systems because the pavement's going to go back. Be going back. You can see in that aerial the same thing. There's quite a few trees on the south and the, the east. A little bit of exposure for that house on the east up there on the top in the corner. Exist within the existence. So, I can answer any questions. Uh, to uh, just clarify, so that right now, if there's a curb cut on Holly and two on Phillips? No. Uh, the one in this, uh, let's see, the pointer up there. This is mm -hmm. the Phillips Street. Yes. The Holly one's kind of hidden by the tree, but it's right there. Yeah. You're getting rid of the holly. We're getting rid of the big holly one and all of our, this is parking lot, as I said, will be used for the restaurant patrons and for a little bit of new retail that we're adding. Mm -hmm. All of our resident parking is on the other side of the street where there's another existing parking lot where the uh, social center is. Um, that's going to accommodate all of our resident cars and will be covered and have a green roof over it so it's not very visible and very contained. But this will be public. And um, giving up the curb cut on Holly because of traffic safety, getting away from that intersection a little bit. 
that well, two reasons. I don't see that we saw that we need to. Second reason, <coughs> the city doesn't want them there anymore. <laughs> and get uh, continuous, uh, continuous sidewalk uh, mm -hmm. moment. And, and I think the green buffer along there will dress that up for all of us. Um, helps with our drainage and our uh, outflow of water, and cleaning the water. Those are objectives we've been all working on. Mm -hmm. Very good. Is that uh, the green garden swale? Is that all on the on on your parcel, or does that cross onto the? I believe our that ten foot setback starts at our property line, goes into the property, okay. so it's all on the parcel. There may be a sliver that's there. I, you know, widening the sidewalk to six feet is going to narrow the the city's um, street tree uh, mm -hmm. green space by a bit. Uh, but we're planning on meeting all the street tree requirements up and down the property. Right. Okay. Thank you. And um, bearing in mind that the only issue before this board is whether the changes you propose to make to this parking lot will <coughs> result in new conditions that are substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, well, or less, I mean, where the standard we have to apply is we have to make a determination that, that the changes you are making will not be, will not be more detrimental to the, to the characteristics of the neighborhood. So you're reducing impervious surface? Yes. Because you're reducing paved area? And you're yes. improving drainage because of the added green buffers and the swales. And um, you're eliminating a second hazardous curb cut on Holly. And um, you're adding more plantings. Um, there's a very slight reduction in the number of parking spaces, not an increase, correct? We're going from. Um uh, we're going from 87 percent impervious site cover down to 71, and you saw on that shaded gray, white drawing. Go back to all around the perimeter. All that gray you saw was the reduction of pavement coming back to the proposed line. Right. So it, it does every single on every single side. It increases the setback from the lot line to the parking lot. And tonight at the planning board, I assume you'll be addressing issues relating to increase in traffic and and perhaps the fact that everybody going in and out of that parking lot will now be doing it on Phillips Place instead of having the second option of Holly. But that's tonight at the planning board. Um, and the use, the change in use, and the added intensity of use and the possible alteration to the characteristics of the neighborhood from the change of use mm -hmm. is before the planning board tonight. Yes, and if, if you had more than 15 minutes, I'd explain why that, those things aren't going to happen, but I won't. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's literally not within our jurisdiction. Um, okay, any other questions from the board? <coughs> I just want to clarify, um, the, uh, the application checks on the board special permit, but we're doing a finding not a special permit. Correct. Right. Um, okay. So uh, I guess we'll, if, if there's no more now, the applicant will have an opportunity to respond to questions that other people ask. But it, it, oh, I know what I was going to ask. Lighting. Is there anything changing or being added in terms of lighting that could? Well, that's a good one. Overflow uh, off-site affecting the, the surrounding neighborhood. I think that's a very good one. We, we drove around there again yesterday, and, and I noticed uh, way more than I even realized we were there. For some unknown reason, every light that was put up on this property, both sides of the street, the back parking lot, the drive along the driveways, and this lot are placed uh, on the property line, right on the property line, extremely close to people's bedroom windows. They have no downlight cutoff characteristics whatsoever. They're just glowing balls up there. So we will be lighting 
uh, for safety for our residents or seniors. So in their parking area, we'll get an adequate lighting, but we're going to encapsulate it under this green roof so it can't spill out to the neighbors. And on this property, we will have cut off pictures that put the light down where people are getting out of their car and out across the lot line. And, and the planning board will be quizzing us probably extensively on all of that. Right. Right. For compliance with the dark sky restrictions yes. and so on. And then what about signage? Is the parking lot going to have any signage? Well, you know, sign, we, we've done these over and over everywhere across the country. There's a, there's a signage standard and we have to design to it and we will. And only if there's some incredibly unusual need that we see will we come forward and say there's a way to get around some limit there that we think should be, should be considered. We've never had trouble doing that. Sign standards are good things. They avoid chaos and overdoing of advertising and all sorts of things. But we do have to let people know that, that this retirement community uh, is here and how to reach its main entrance drive and who should park in that visitor lot and uh, who should use the service drive uh, for deliveries. And but I'm just talking about signage for this parking lot because this is oh, the only part in front well, of us. Yes, it'll have some sign on it somewhere, I hope, that says the visitor parking, restaurant visitor, retail parking. But that would be part of the planning board's review? Um, it would be, but there's some, um, there are some allowances by right for yeah. uses. So if, if they're not going to look at it tonight because um, the specific um, details of the signs haven't been worked out yet, but at the time that they're ready to install signs, they'll apply to the building department, staff would evaluate it, and then make a determination whether or not it was a by right allowance or if it got kicked up to the board, zoning board, for review. So that it could come back if it, it weren't allowed as if the, the requested signage were not allowed as of right, right. it would come back here for a special permit for additional signage. Right. But for our purposes, this issue of whether it, the changes will be substantially more detrimental, that's why I was curious about yeah. if there are going to be any lit, you know, illuminated signs or anything like that on this parking lot, because this parking lot is the only thing in front of us. Well, as I said, the only thing I think we want, and I think the neighbors probably want it, I would assume as well, we're trying very hard to be sure that the impact of this project, uh, parking-wise at least, stays on our property. There are a lot of cars that park on Phillips to access downtown. There's some poor folks that have to live with that in snow conditions and other circumstances that arise. We don't want to add to that problem. So the only sign we're going to ask for is something that hopefully will cause people who read signs and everybody doesn't mm -hmm. to go to this lot and park their car there and not park it on the street. We want to get that message through somehow. And I'm sure the sign and ordinance would figure out a way to do that probably when we. Uh, Get to that so. All right. Any other questions from the board? So we'll we'll mm -hmm. open this up to uh, anybody who is here uh, who would like to address <coughs> this application or is looking for more information about this application, or, or maybe people are just here to gather information at least at this hearing. But does anybody would anybody else like to speak? Yes, sir. Should I come up here? Sure, please. And if you could just give your name and address sure. for the. The uh, Jim Nash, 18 Montview, and um, so I, I'm curious as to, um, I mean, overall with with the parking lot design, you know, I'm I'm fine with that. It, it, my I'm, my concern is by keeping the curb cut on Phillips, where rather than um, the one on Holly, Holly's a commercial street in my mind, it has lots of commercial buildings. And that what we're talking about is a restaurant, a commercial operation, and that you know I would think that um, having the curb cut on Holly would make more sense. It wouldn't be attracting more cars onto Phillips Place, a residential street. Um, once, once I, you know, if I went to that parking lot, I'd be taking a right to go to my house, you know, of Phillips. If if that curb cut were on. Uh, Holly Street, I'd be taking a left to go to my house and I wouldn't be on Phillips. So the customers and visitors during the day are going to be on Hall, uh, on Phillips instead of Holly by, by this choice. So, so maybe we can ask if the applicant or Carolyn might have some input on that too, but first the applicant or? Actually let Carolyn go. Okay. 
do you have any sort of? Um, I mean, yeah, I think um, from a traffic standpoint, um, eliminating the conflict that close to the intersection of Phillips and Holly, but with that curb cut, um, is an improvement for pedestrian safety for other users on Holly Street. Um, I think the people who will be accessing the site will come up just a little ways on Phillips Place and access that driveway and then go back to Holly Street when they're exiting. Um, but it's a safer condition for the street that has the heavier traffic that close to the intersection to close that curb cut and for pedestrians along the sidewalk using that sidewalk. Yeah, I think um, directly across the street from that curb cut is uh, where those other trees are. Like, by the way, on that on the side of the street that this parking lot is, there is posted currently no parking. So uh, there's a pretty clear lane uh, available there as long as someone's not parking illegally. On Phillips. On Phillips. One of the residents that we met, we met twice with the neighbors and tried to you know, talk through a lot of these issues before the city ever saw our plan. And uh, <coughs> in reality, for our purposes, it would be okay for somebody to drive and park in that lot from either street. It probably wouldn't matter functionally much to us because if they're going to the restaurant, it would be fun. But there were some city uh, planning guidelines, expectations, and goals relative to sidewalk treatments, getting rid of all these curb cut interruptions that break that up, being able to provide this, uh, the swale that we're talking about that would collect water, filter it before it goes in the sewer would, for the most part, go away if that curb cut stayed on hauling. Uh, you can't really drain the Phillips, it doesn't work. So we could probably live with it either way, but I think the you know the ball's kind of in the air. But I do think that the traffic it will generate won't affect people up Phillips much. I think 90% of it's going to come in and turn the parking lot go back out the same way that it came, and and we would do everything we could to encourage that. But okay. Any other? I just want to sure. comment sure. Um, that you know I think in overall in the the project already is attracting more drivers to the the residents and also for any of the services and then to add customers to Phillips as well I, I think that's a big ask and we have a commercial quarter that's where the traffic should be and that's that would be my opinion. Um, the, the other thing I'm curious about is um, the, they're along Phillips, we're, we're doing improvements, but there's no plans for, for a sidewalk. So I'm curious about that. And does that get covered here? Do I take that to the planning board instead? Or? The planning board. Take it to yeah, planning board. The planning board is going to be doing an entire site review with it. Right. Okay, so yeah, but the yeah, curb cut question is for you guys. Okay. Well, it's not that the curb cut question specifically is for us. We are asked to apply the standard. Will these changes overall, all of the changes taken into consideration, um, compared to the existing condition, lead to a result that is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood? So I think we also have to weigh the the other improvements that that are quite frankly, pretty obvious right. in terms of reducing improved curvy surface, including in increasing green buffers, the swale, improving drainage concerns onto Holly Street against the point that I think the, the valid point you raised that, you know, isn't it, doesn't it make more sense to have commercial traffic coming in and out of Holly than going onto a residential street on Phillips? Although it is, I, I, I do uh, tend to agree that we're talking about just a, a stretch up Phillips that doesn't have houses on either side, and then you go in and out of that that parking lot. But uh, it's kind but, of 60 feet of tall. Yeah. I mean, Phillips and Green, but on the sidewalk issue, we actually uh, drew one in on that side of the street. We took it back out, but we realized it was a sidewalk to nowhere. There's a sidewalk on the other side, but there is no sidewalk whatsoever that we could find going down that side. If there was a plan in place or in the works or contemplated to do something 
you know, in the future, I guess we would have a problem with one there. Yeah, the plan, I mean, this is all planning board issues, though, right. the curb so cuts, we'll, multiple yeah, curb so cuts. That'll, that can be discussed tonight. <laughs> the planning board regularly requires applicants to put sidewalks on the property, even if in the instant that it, the decision is made, it appears it doesn't go anywhere because there's always a future possibility for right. connection. And other speakers, uh, yes. Marie Lecter, 36 Phillips Place. And um, I I personally would prefer to see the curb cut on Holly because as it is now, traffic patterns in downtown Northampton, if people come out of a restaurant and have an option to go right on Phillips Place to get out of town or not, they're going to take that. And that's where we've seen increased traffic already. And especially since the main entrance is on Phillips Place, so residential parking and flow from the project is already going that way, so it would keep the commercial traffic coming off of Holly. It would help maintain the residential nature of that of that area. Uh, thank you. I have a question for Carolyn. Is is the curb cut on Holly is also on the table tonight with planning board? Because so it's it that, that's on the table again tonight. It's this what we decide here does not put okay. an end to that issue because um, so, so really the whole about development is, the is before the, the back of the that buffer and See, they're all, they're not and only for this parking lot in general right. they're not getting a variance actually the not buffer. even the whole parking lot it's just, just the, the back half okay of it. it's just it's just ambiguous on the meeting notice i see any other, anyone else, would anyone like, else like to speak to us about the issues before us well, I mean, you can speak about anything at all relevant, but you, you, I haven't made it obvious. Um, go ahead. Um, well, I'm Linda Conklin from 22 Butler Place, which is the next street over. Mm -hmm. But I have done research for years and watched where people uh, parked on Phillips Place, and I thank God they weren't on Butler Place, although some of them were. And I would follow them, because I wanted to get my walking in, and I would follow them and see where they went. I told our city councilor, who's now retired from it, that I told him about what I witnessed. I would follow the people who would come, park on Phillips Place, and walk all the way up to the buildings on South Street, the old schools, walk all that way to be able to park. And many of them would have briefcases. I watched people go into the Fitzwillies building, but I think, again, they weren't going into Fitzwillies, they were going in up to offices. Um, Many people park on Butler Place as well. They'll leave barking dogs in the car. I mean, it's become quite a problem. That isn't the only problem, though. On that corner, when you're coming off of Bridge Street and you're coming down Holly Street, and right before you take your left to go up Phillips Place, there's a corner right there. And there is no signage that says you can't park there. It's the most dangerous place I've ever witnessed. Visibility for. Well, because those big trucks come, the signage, I've been away for six months, but I'm assuming everything's still the same. The signage directs them down because uh, big truck drivers have gotten stuck there, and I happen to be there and I try to help them. It's the one, truck one truck driver, actually, he was coming from, and I, I sort of forgot because it's six months ago, but there was a hole, there was construction on Phillips Place, and there was a hole, and there was one of those big uh, orange cones a huge one though. He would get out of his truck, move the orange cone off to the side, get back in his truck, and go further, then come back out, get that big barrel, and put it back to cover the hole. That went on for months. <laughs> I, I couldn't, I just couldn't understand it. And so then you come down with that big truck, and you have to make that corner up Phillips Place, because that's what the signs tell you to do, and you've got those cars parked on the corner, like maybe only two or three, but they're always there. Is everyone aware of that problem? Well, but, but the, the question we're asked to answer is, will this parking lot be better or worse with these improvements that are proposed? The issues about traffic in the neighborhood and increased is, use and so on is, is go, relates to the larger right. application and pending for the plan. And that's at seven. So that's at seven. Oh, next. No, it's actually four two. We're at nine. So we get some sleep. <laughs> 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 but I also agree with Marie and this other fellow uh, that the curb cut on Holly would be much preferable to the curb cut on Phillips Place. They have way too much traffic there. I've watched it for 35 years. It's unbelievable. 
And so I think what this fellow said, this is the commercial corridor, and that's where it should be. Okay. And I walk there almost every day when I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? So it's really just about oh, how the trees look? Yes. <laughs> they look good. <laughs> and the reduction in purpose. They look better. Yeah. Yeah. They're, reducing, they're reducing paved area. Yeah, right. They're, they're in, okay. increasing drainage and swales. It's, it's about I more than the way the trees look. That, I'm sorry. In my view, it's yeah. about more than. I think there may be larger issues that people will want to have addressed by the planning board. but. That's not, those are not our issues. Right. And I, it's, I'm not just punting, I'm, we're just following the guidelines that we volunteered as fellow <laughs> neighbors to, to follow uh, as members of the zoning board. And, and we, from, from the few meetings we've had, we're more in this neighborhood with a variety of folks, so most of them come over here tonight. We're very, very aware of this parking issue. We're very aware of the traffic. We are concerned about the congestion at that intersection in terms of emergency vehicles getting to properties, ours or others. Somebody gave us a very scary picture from the winter of 2015 that showed that <laughs> intersection with cars parked probably illegally on both sides of the street down Phillips. If you close that curb pit, they'd be parking all the way to the corner. And then uh, snow, you know, by feet of snow on top of it all and you sort of said how could any uh, service vehicle make it through there we're real aware of it we don't want to make it worse um, and uh, make decisions that will try not to make traffic or parking worse so, was there somebody else who did I see a hand and anyone else want to speak or ask questions okay. um, any other questions for board members? So, uh, no. I guess then the question is, do we want to have a motion to close the public hearing on this application, after which we could not take any more input from the public or the applicant? Or, oh, who's who's voting? Um, okay, so, so we've all heard the application, but the three people voting will be Elizabeth, Sarah, and me. So motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor, it's unanimous. And we could either have discussion and then a motion or a motion and a discussion or a motion and a vote. Well, I'd like to just um, note as someone who, uh, a tree hugger who designs parking lots almost every day, um, I note that it's a decent design. I like it that it's got the rain garden and dealing with the stormwater, which is, uh, it's not just uh, an existing problem, it's a problem that's getting worse um, with weather and regulatory conditions. Um, and moving the traffic away from that intersection is, is a public safety issue. I would have liked to have seen just moving that entrance back, you know, towards the south, and then we have this 14-inch beech tree, and who's going to want to cut that down? So um, that's just my uh, my little bit of input. Um, but as far as the, the the buffers, they're they're carefully and nicely thought out uh, for advantage of the URC zone. My reaction is that um, setting aside the larger issues, which um, are, you know, to be heard by the other, by the planning board. And by the way, if I lived in this neighborhood, I, I, I'd have very serious concerns about the change of, not from this parking lot though, but but the the effect of the change of use. But that's that's uh, for the planning board discussion. Um, given the fact that we're just looking at the parking lot, I find it pretty hard not to conclude that the proposed improvements will result in uh, a uh, a you know, not a redesign, but a but a but changes to the to the overall uh, layout and uh, details of the parking lot that. Uh, 
can only be considered improvements. Um, I, just, I just don't see how you look at it otherwise. Yes, there's a question about the curb cut on Holly, but the city uh, planners are telling us that there are important safety reasons why it's better to close off that curb cut. Um, and the people who have a concern with that will get another bite at that apple uh, in front of the planning board. Um, but just looking at the before and after pictures here, I don't see how we couldn't conclude that not only will it not be, remember the standard isn't even is it better, it's is it not substantially more detrimental. It's not even, the standard isn't even does this make it better, although I think it does. It's is it not substantially more detrimental. And I really don't say, see how overall with this redesign, you could argue that the, net, the end result is substantially more detrimental. Whether the change in use of the other buildings, that the effect that may have, different issue, but not our issue. Um, any other thoughts before we? Did the DPW have anything? Yeah, any, not in terms question. of the, not in terms of this permit finding in front of the judge. So, so no no concerns or objections or or right. recommended conditions by DPW. Right. Okay. Elizabeth, anything else? Okay. So um, I guess we'll have a motion. If uh, to uh, a motion on the application. I move that we grant, uh, grant the finding um, for <laughs> thank you the commercial <laughs> finding for buffer setback, <coughs> urban senior living LLC construction, etc. Um, regarding the parking lot. And talk about the other structures, etc. Um, map ID 32A. In this case, it doesn't say exactly which one I'm talking about. 137, 197, and 170. 170, 171, and 197. I'm just checking. I think 171 is elsewhere. In any case, the application as presented. Um, Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have one other matter, uh, which was supposed to be at six o'clock. Um, the <laughs> dimension. The uh, there was a request for a dimensional variance for two flag lots by Neil and Carrie Homestead at 408 North Terms Road, Florence, meant by D7-11. And I understand there's been a request for a Correct. I wanted to be here. I know. to the first of the date of June. Good to you. Are you old enough? Good. Exciting. I guess we I've got nowhere else to go for a couple hours, except maybe they can have I'm part of that. Okay, great. And then, uh, no minutes, right? Sure. So, just All in favor,